Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to do another update on what is going on up in the stratosphere. Now last weekend we had a look at the stratosphere and we said it was pretty imminent that a sudden stratospheric warming will be taking place and as you can see I've got this at the zero hours and we are seeing that warming now towards the end of this working week. It is going to push away that polar vortex, most likely displacing it does look like that split scenario has disintegrated and it will reverse those zonal mean winds. However, we have seen a little bit of an adjustment over the past few days. Instead of completely obliterating the polar vortex with no recovery, some runs are actually recovering the polar vortex. Not massively, still probably below average, but not quite as much of an obliteration as we thought a few days ago. Now, will that have profound impacts on the longer term through March and April, where this would increase the chance of blocking with this major SSW? We can't say for certain, but definitely seeing a few changes, and we'll run through those today. Now, you can see on the latest GFS that warming is moving in, and it is pushing that polar vortex well out towards Scandinavia and Northern Europe. It's stretching it, trying to break it apart, perhaps temporarily splitting it, but not a permanent split by any means. And you can see the polar vortex does get destroyed. We actually do see there in the extended range, perhaps a bit of a split appearing. Now, I said uh, less likely to see a split. Uh, you can see there were two lobes of colder air developing there. But if we do actually have a look at the, the uh, 10 HPA winds, you can see not too much of a split actually appearing in the zonal mean wind. So even though the temperatures look like they're splitting, there's not as much split. Perhaps a little bit here, but really nothing too crazy. But the zonal mean winds do reverse. But as I said, they are getting obliterated, but only for a few days, not the week or two like we thought in our last update. Uh, and that will be a lot more obvious when we do have a look at some of the line charts in a minute. But the polar vortex, even though it is going to be very weak through the end of February into early March, it still stays there and is not completely destroyed. Now, you may be looking at this and thinking it looks completely destroyed, but it is normal for it to warm up. Uh, in March, uh, February, March, and then normally disintegrate in April uh, as we do dis descend towards summer. So even though, yes, it looks completely different to the beginning, this next sort of two weeks, we do generally see uh, a warming regardless of if a proper sudden stratospheric warming comes our way. So that's why, uh, even though at the end of this run, it looks like the polar vortex is almost non-existent, it actually is recovering a little bit, just not quite uh, as much uh, as if we hadn't seen an SSW here. So you can see GFS clearly shows a displacement event, attempting a bit of a split, seeing a bit of a split in the temperatures, but in the actual zonal mean winds, not seeing a massive split with two sort of distinct lobes of polar vortex. It does recover in the longer range and does progress back towards the pole. Now, the best way of viewing this really is I'm trying to explain images here is just by having a good line graph and this is the latest gfs ensembles you can see the green hair dropping down towards zero and below zero and you can see it goes complete reversal but a few days ago we were seeing those greens not really recovering but now they're getting around average or below average so it's still not strong by any means but the majority of ensemble members do recover that polar vortex and it'll be the second sudden stratospheric warming we've seen this winter where we see quite a quick rebound back towards average conditions now the previous one we saw in middle to early january did recover to average and above average being still relatively early on in the uh, new year however at this stage, it's difficult to say uh, whether this rebound will be permanent or whether this is just a temporary effect and it actually does drop very quickly beyond that. We'll have to see, of course, but definitely quite a big change from a few days ago. If you do check out, if you've not seen that video or you have watched that video, maybe go back and have a look at it and you'll be able to see the lines are definitely a lot different in only a few days. Now, the same can be said with the ECMWF, uh, which we'll have a look at in a minute. But I do just want to show you the uh, cross section. This is the GFS run, and you can see a massive weakening up in the polar vortex with these dark blues indicating a reversal of the zonal mean winds for a few days. On the right, the anomaly chart showing you it is 45 degrees below what it should be high up in the stratosphere. But you can see that after that, yes, it is still weak, still seeing a negative anomaly. But it's only 5 to 10 degree anomaly, so it's nowhere near as strong as we thought the longer range could be. 
a few days ago. So we've seen a little bit more of a recovery. Now, does that lower the chances of blocking uh, into spring? Perhaps, but again, with SSWs, it's not an exact science. It's very much more of a correlation uh, and causation than an absolute this follows from this. We generally look at sun stratospheric warmings and say that a split can encourage more blocking than a displacement event. We can say uh, exactly where the displacement event goes can have an effect where we see cold weather. So there are things like that we can look at, but it is impossible to say whether the rebound effect, how quickly it rebounds, how, or how, what sort of impact that will have at the surface. All we can say, though, is that more than SSW will be taking place regardless of the rebound. After that, definitely is an increased chance of more blocking, maybe easily wins into March and April, which can get very annoying because that is the point of the year where we start to see sunlight start to strengthen, the days get longer, and most people looking forward to something a bit summery uh, uh, and spring-like, but these sort of events can delay that and prolong winter and probably could actually give us colder conditions than we're seeing now as the temperatures have been in the mid-teens the last few days. As I said though, if we check out the ECMWF, you can see it's broadly very similar. That dip as we head into next week, towing very warm at high up in the stratosphere, seeing this complete reversal, and then you can see a recovery. Still below average, I must say, but it is a recovery that we didn't anticipate being this strong a few days ago. Some kept it around zero or below zero for the foreseeable future. You can see, though, into March, most of the ECMWF ensembles are still getting towards zero or below zero. So regardless of exactly what happens in the next two weeks, the majority of runs do actually have us being very weak into March. Uh, uh, and with that, Vortex not recovering um, in the long term, definitely perhaps a premature destruction this year of the Pope Vortex. So that'll be interesting to watch. And again, it could have profound impacts on the spring. From what we've seen in the past, this definitely could cause a lot more cooler or colder weather, uh, lots of stubborn cold weather potentially as well. So if you, as I said, if you're looking forward to something warmer uh, and something brighter as we head into the spring, then this is not a particularly good thing. As I said, though, we will have to see the exact effects over the coming days and in the coming weeks. We won't know exactly what is going to happen as a result of this until it actually does happen. SSWs have only really been properly monitored and studied for the past few decades, uh, which does sound like a long time, but our actual data set of sudden stratospheric warmings isn't actually particularly big. So it is very difficult to say exactly what will happen uh, depending on sort of rebound effects, exact warming, exact timings, things like that. It is still one uh, where every time we see an SSW, we don't know exactly what will happen. We could just say what will probably happen or what is more likely to happen. But as I said, we will see, and as I said, this could prolong cooler, colder block conditions into spring. As I said, could even see colder March and April than we've seen this February so far. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.